standing by for a scheduled contact. With the I headsets. Over. <laughs> GB1SS, GB1SS, Golf Bravo 1 Sierra Sierra. This is GB2 CNS, Golf Bravo 2 Charlie November Sierra. Listening and standing by for a scheduled contact with the International Space Station. Over. GB1SS. The Golf Bravo 1 Sierra Sierra. This is GB2 CNS, Golf Bravo 2 Charlie November Sierra. Listening and standing by for a scheduled contact with the International Space Station. Hello, Golf Bravo 2 Charlie November Sierra. This is Golf Bravo 1 Sierra Sierra. I wish you bye. I'll be over. Hi, Tim. This is Tim, M6HDK. <laughs> Are you ready for your first question? Over. It's great to be talking to you, Norwich, and yes, I'm ready for my first question. Over. Hi, this is Maddie. What do you do if you cut yourself really badly in space? Over. Hi, this is Austin. Are there any protocols or guidance in place if George Clooney comes knocking on the front door <laughs> as he did in the film Gravity? Over. <laughs> Tim, it's Kieran M0XTD. We have you on Ham TV. Give us a wave. Here's your next question. Hi, this is Sophie. What experiment would you like to add to your mission based on the experiences you have had? Over. Hi, Sophie. Um, I would like to see us doing more of the medical research vaccines and looking into uh, new drug methods as well. I think that's some of the most exciting research we're doing up here. Over. Hi, this is Max. In what ways does the lack of natural sunlight and fresh air affect you on the ISS? Over. Hi Max, I love opening the windows in the cupola when I was in uh, Node 3 or in the uh, Japanese module. I love the sunshine coming through the windows and it does make a difference. It does kind of brighten up your day and make you feel better. Uh, Hi, this is Charlotte. How do you get changed in space when your clothes go everywhere? Over. Hi Charlotte, they do go everywhere. We have to use bungees. Uh, or we bungee our clothes down so they don't float off and you don't lose them. Over. Hi, this is Eden. One of the experiments you are conducting in space is to measure fluid shifts in the body. In what way does this help us back on Earth? Over. Hi Eden, that's a great question. Fluid shift really kicks off the whole process of the changes to our body. It's because of the fluid shift we get greater pressure in our head and we start to lose uh, bone density as well. So that triggers all the changes and it's by changing things in our body that we can learn about our body and we can investigate these things. Over. Hi, this is Thomas. With the basic design of current spacecraft dating back decades, where do you think the next leap forward in spacecraft technology will occur? Over. I mean, we're playing with the basic rules of physics and gravity here in laws of motion, so uh, I think that we're going to see big changes to our spacecraft in terms of our transit to Mars and transit to Moon. Uh, but in terms of getting to know Earth orbit, I don't think we're going to see many big changes uh, that we have in current spacecraft design. Over. Hi, this is Emily. How different was the, sh was the training compared to the experience of actually launching into space? Over. <laughs> I believe the training was so good that it really prepared us for launching into space and there are very few differences between what we were training for on ground and how we live and work up here in space. Over. Hi, this is Millie. With improving technology on Earth, are there experiments that you are currently carrying out in space that could one day be repeated on Earth? Over. Yes, 
there are loads of experiments up here that we're doing that could be repeated uh, on Earth. I think that it's going to be a long time before we uh, manage to sort of counter gravity for a long period of time on Earth. So we use parabolic flights and drop towers. But the benefit of being up here in low Earth orbit is, of course, we have microgravity continuously. So we can do those experiments for a very long time. Uh, but we do repeat the experiments back on Earth, of course, to see the changes, to see what's the difference between space and Earth. Over. Hi, this is Erin. Which materials being developed with the electromagnetic levitator will have the largest impact on the development of greener living? Over. Hi Erin. Well, I think the metal alloys are the one area of research that are going to have the big impact on greener living uh, because that will affect how our engines are designed um, and uh, in particular our commercial aircraft turbine blades and turbine engines, for example which will cut down fuel production and cut down fuel usage and uh, have a good impact in, in aviation, over. Hi, this is Maddie asking you this question. Since being in space, what has been your most amusing dream? Over. Hi Maddie, do you know, I, I haven't dreamt much up here in space. Uh, and when I do, I dream of Earth. I haven't yet dreamt of being in space. <laughs> um, and I think it's because we, we sleep quite heavily up here, actually. I, quite, I sleep quite well here in space, over. Hi, this is Austin asking Libby's question. If everyone in Britain turned their lights on and off at the same time, would you see it from space? Over. Hi Austin, yes, you definitely would see it. You know, we would see a, a small village if you turned your lights on and off. It's amazing that uh, we, the lights really stand out very well from space. Um, certainly a, a major city turning their lights on and off would stand out very clearly. Over. Hi, this is Sophie asking Ella's question. Which part of the Earth do you like orbiting over the most and why? Over. Hi Sophie, uh, I love orbiting over Africa. It just looks beautiful from space. It's like flying over a canvas of art. Um, and also North, Northern Canada is beautiful, especially right now with all the ice and the, uh, even the sea is frozen up there. Over. Hi, this is Max asking Amy's question. With sunrise and sunset occurring 16 times a day on board the ISS, does it have any noticeable effect on your body clock? Over. It does. You know, if, I, if I'm looking in the cupola late at night, when it's bright sunshine, it does take me a while to get to sleep here, so I try not to do that. You have to kind of try and trick your body that it's night time when it's time to go to sleep. Over. Hi. Hi, this is Charlotte asking Mimi's question. How does being in space make you relate to your place in the universe? Over. Hi Charlotte, that's a great question. You know, I mean, being up in space gives a different perspective and it makes you realise how vast the solar system is, how vast the universe is. And also it makes you realise that our planet, uh, you know, it has no borders. It's got massive weather systems that uh, are affect all continents. And so it does give you that perspective of, of the planet as a whole. Over. Hi, this is Eden asking Bruno's question. Is there a song or a piece of art that you think reproduces the feeling of being in zero gravity? If so, which one? Over. Right now, for example, it might be a beautiful woman one way up and a, an old-handed woman one the other way up. I think that's great because it, it makes you realise in space, of course, we have a different perspective depending on which way up we are. Over. B to CNS returning. That was fantastic, thank you. Everyone here would like to say a big thank you. <laughs> this is GB to CNS handing back to handing back to GB1 SS for the final. GB to CNS off and play. It's been wonderful talking to everybody in Norwich this afternoon. Have a great day and thank you for those brilliant questions. Uh, goodbye from the International Space Station. Out. Well done, guys. Absolutely.
absolutely brilliant. I think they deserve a huge round of applause. And for putting somebody who's only just recently passed his amateur radio exam on the mic, well done, Tim. So, talking about